Hey guys, before I get started with the video, I have a couple exciting announcements. One is that I actually have a Twitter now, so you can follow me, and I mainly post like bug stuff or whatever's on my mind. And I also have a blog, and I will be talking about teaching and cool science and other kind of things that just happen. So if you want to follow me more than just on YouTube, then those are two other options. Hey guys, this video is going to be all about aquatic collecting, and as you can see from the outline, I'll be going over some of the stuff that you'll need, and then where you can collect in different habitats, including creeks, lakes, and little, kind of, tiny little ponds. And, of course, as usual, there are bloopers. And you can go, and you can click on the outline, and it'll bring you to anywhere that you want to go in the video. Hey guys, I'm at Lake Herrick and I'm going to do some aquatic collecting. Some things that you're going to want are a D-net, aptly named because it looks like a D, and a white or yellow pan so you can dump out some of the water and some of the muck and actually look and see what you've got in your stuff. Hey guys, I'm at my friend's house and she has this awesome tree. One of the things that you guys can do to look for insects, you probably won't get adults, but you still find some really cool stuff, is just flip rocks and see what you find on the other side. So here we go, we got something. And then you can um, brush them off into your white can. There he is. And so this is a really cool thing to do with kids. If for your classroom, you can just go out and then collect macroinvertebrates and the different kinds and how many you get signify whether the Cedar Stream ecosystem is healthy. So you can also find really cool dragonflies around. This guy is probably pretty cool, so he's not moving very much. But he's a good addition to your collection. So sometimes on shore banks like this, you can find some cool things. So on this log right here, this is a family of orthopter. It's a pygmy grasshopper. And they're super cool. He's his own family. So to look at the stuff that you got in your net, you're gonna take your pan and you're going to fill it a little bit with water. And then you put it on the shore bank and then you'll find your critter. you've done that a few times you can look at all the really cool stuff that you got so here's some macro invertebrates and these little beetles that are swimming around are their own family which you can use for your collection this guy right here this is a damselfly nymph he is walking towards a dragonfly nymph and this is really great because you can see the difference between the two the dragonfly nymphs are like short and fat and the damselfly nymphs are really long Long, that you can see their wing pads starting to form and they're kind of like propeller y esque tail. We have a little whirly gig beetle, and we would have to take him out and take a pretty good picture at him to see what kind of 
family he is, but he's an adult, so you could use him for your collection. Ah, so here you see a little case that's walking. That's a trichopter larva, and they're super cool. And as you see, he's built his little case for protection and is walking around. And as I've mentioned before, those cases are species specific. We have an amphipod. It's a type of zooplankton. And they're they're kind of fun. They're another arthropod. They're technically a crustacean. Hey, little fish! And these guys are really cool because they're like transparent. So, oftentimes on uh, sandy banks like this, you can find some other cool organisms. This guy is called a gelastochoridae, or a toad bug, because they jump. So I will demonstrate. And these guys are their own family, uh, and really good for your collection. They're hemipterans. They do bite. They have raptorial for legs, so just be careful. This is a surfid or a bee mimic, or a hoverfly. But you can definitely see his little fly eyes and his little fly tongue, his little fly antennae. So there's a couple of damsel flies right along this little water bush. Shallow pools and ponds like this are usually really good for dragonflies and damselflies. And damselflies and dragonflies have a bunch of families in them, so it's always a good idea to get as many of them as you can. And so the best way to try and catch them is to wait until they sit still, but they can move all their wings independently and see you coming from all angles, so some of it is just uh, luck if you get it. So this guy's kind of close to the water, and I might get my net wet, so I might wait for another one. I'm going to get ready. And then you are going to swish as quickly as possible, and while you're swinging, try and bring the end of your net up over the top, and hope that he doesn't fly away. And there you have your little damsel fly. And what you should do with these guys is uh, you spread them, so you can look at their wing venation, because that's really important for this group. And he's really chill. Usually they aren't this chill. But make sure it's kind of close to the mud too. And he'll pick it up. And we'll see what we get! Which is nothing. But in addition, when you... Start over. I'm gonna try it. Okay, it's recording. Okay. So this is a toad bug, by is, I mean was.